Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please stand if you are able and remain standing as we begin our ceremony with a moment of silence, the posting of the colors, the singing of the national anthem. Please join me in a moment of silence to remember the fallen, the prisoners of war, the missing in action, and honor those who have served and are serving this great nation's armed services. Colors will be posted by American Legion Post 154. Color Guard, post the colors. Pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join in singing our national anthem, which will be led by Chloe Reed from Enfield High School. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Thank you for joining us today. It is my honor to stand before you to emcee this tribute to our veterans and military. The decision to commence with our ceremony was not a difficult decision for me. You see, our men and women do not stop fighting for our freedoms because the weather is in climate. And that is why today we still remember and honor them in the rain. And I am truly, truly, I'm going off script, amazed at how many people are here. I'm overwhelmed, honestly. So thank you all for being here. Um, there are a few people I'd like to just thank the elected officials 
uh, for attending today, our town officials and state officials. I appreciate you being here. Last December, and for the first time, wreaths across America was granted permission to place wreaths abroad. They placed 9,287 live veterans wreaths from Maine on all the headstones at Normandy. This included ceremonial wreath placements on each of the D-Day invasion beaches and at Point du Coq as we approach the 75th anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge, Reese Across America was once again granted permission to place veterans wreaths at all 5,073 headstones of U.S. servicemen laid to rest at Luxembourg American Cemetery and 8,291 veterans wreaths at Netherlands American Cemetery and Memorial. These cer ceremonies took place on November 3rd and December 1st, respectively. As we gather today at St. Pat's Cemetery and over 2,000 sites across America to remember that we are one nation with one flag and that we are proud to be Americans that live in a free society, we are reminded that the freedoms we enjoy today have not come without a price. Lying here before us and in cemeteries throughout this nation are men and women who gave their lives so that we can live in freedom without fear. We thank those who gave their lives to keep us free and we shall not forget you. We will remember you. Many of you here today are veterans of wars and conflicts that America has had to fight to protect the innocent and oppressed. This nation has always been the first to stand up for the freedom of people from around the world. You have answered that call and served your country well. We are here to say thank you, and we are honored to know you. If you are a veteran or currently serving, please stand or raise your hand so we may applaud you. Thank you. There are many men and women serving today in all branches of the military, here at home and in places far away that most of us have never heard of. These men and women are a part of the best trained, best equipped force in the world. We honor them and their families for the sacrifices they make each day to keep our country safe from terrorism, hatred, and injustice. Quoting our 40th United States President, Ronald Reagan, stated, freedom is never more than one generation from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children through the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day, we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. End quote. We are here to show a united front of gratitude and respect across the United States of America as we remember the fallen, honor those that, who serve and their families, and teach the next generation the value of freedom. I would like to recognize the Gold Star families that are currently present at today's ceremony. Son Tyler Jordan of Marine Gunnery Staff Sergeant Philip Jordan of Enfield, who was killed in action in the vicinity of Nazara, uh, Iraq, on March 23, 2003. Philip's final resting place is here in St. Patrick's Cemetery. Parents Richard and Linda Bixler and his grandmother of, of Marine Gun. Corporal Stephen Bixler of Suff Suffield, who was killed while conducting combat operations against enemy forces in Al Ambar Province, Iraq, on May 4, 2006. Stephen's final resting place is in Arlington National Cemetery. Mother Kathy Johnson and sister of Lance Corporal Philip Johnson of Enfield 
who was killed by a roadside bomb near Ramadi, Iraq on September 3rd, 2006. Philip's final resting place is in the Hazardville Cemetery. Brother Carl Sferraza of Angelo Sferraza of Enfield, who was Enfield's first casualty of the Vietnam War. He was serving as a gunner when his helicopter exploded in midair. Angelo's final resting place is here in St. Patrick's Cemetery. Nephew Edward Richards of apprentice seaman Ralph White of Enfield, who was abroad the U.S. Coast Guard Musket WAG 48 when it was sunk in the North Atlantic Ocean. Apprentice seaman Rick, uh, White was never recovered. From a grateful nation, I say to our Gold Star families, thank you for your sacrifice. It is said, to be killed in war is not the worst that can happen. To be lost is not the worst that can happen. To be forgotten is the worst. Presenting the names of those from Enfield that have made the ultimate sacrifice are members from Enfield's first responders, Enfield's police department, Enfield's fire department, which includes Gold Star nephew, Fire Chief Ed Richards, and Enfield's Emergency Service, a Blue Star family, Kelly and Cliff, Cliff Hemmler, Gold Star brother, Carl Sferraza, a Gold Star son, Tyler Jordan, and a Gold Star mother, Kathy Johnson. World War I began July 28, 1914. The United States declared war on Germany on April 6, 1917. A ceasefire and armistice was declared 101 years ago on November 11, 1918. Total U.S. casualties reported are 53,402. Total Connecticut losses, 1,428. Total Enfield losses, eight. Lyle Adams, Giuseppe Bruno, Thomas Everett, Lazarus Harabedian, Timothy Handley, Samuel McCray, Albert Poole, and Horace Tangway. World War II officially began September 1st, 1939. The U.S. entered the war following the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. The war ended on September 2, 1945. Total U.S. casualties were reported at 405,399. Total Connecticut losses, 5,047. Total Enfield losses, 47. John Aerosmith, Jr., Harold Biller, Howard Collette, Anthony Chirpak, Carol Dubiel, Robert Gavey, John Curtanis, Alan Lawton. William McGill, Edward Nobunsky, Earl Ogden, Theodore Sandone, William Tomasowis, Walter Tiprarius, sorry, uh, Andrew Watson, Francis Wadowski. David Austin, Francis Boniscus, Earl Conlon, Arthur DeLorge, Stanley DeRiza, Clarence Hicks, John King, and Jeffrey Lepore. Henry Milkowski. Joseph Nabonzi, Gilbert Pierce, Stanley Skorsky, August Troutner, Albert Eudis, Ralph White, Robert Wood, Edmund Bannon, Robert Carzenzo, Edward Crocia, Frank DeWolf, Frederick Fortin, Walter Innercoffler, Leroy King, John McTollick. 
Luke Chollett. Apologize. Arthur Miller. Martin O'Brien Jr. James Rinaldi. James Spronza. Robert Triggs. Joseph Vish. Joseph Wachowski. The Korean War began June 25, 1950 and ended July 27, 1953. Total in-theater U.S. casualties were reported at 36,574. Connecticut losses, 326. Total Enfield losses, 4. Francis Cody, Rosario Fidi, Edward Fountain, Edward Berinsky. The Vietnam War for the United States began July 1965 and ends with the fall of Saigon in April 1975. Total U.S. casualties are reported at 58,220, Connecticut losses are 631, Enfield losses are four. Robert Goulet, Johnny Ray Hansen, Carl John Marino, Angelo Sferraza. The global war on terror began on October 7, 2001. It continues today, and unfortunately, the number of losses will continue to change. As of December 10, 2019, the number of U.S. casualties are reported as 7,028. Connecticut losses are 65. Enfield losses are 2. My father, Philip Andrew Jordan. My son, Philip Alexander Johnson. Before we place the wreath, will Vicki Stacy please come forward to bless them? Heavenly Father, we thank you for Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather here at St. Patrick's Cemetery to participate in the Wreaths Across America ceremony. Our mission is threefold. Remember. We will remember the fallen when we say their names. Honor. We will honor each veteran when we thank them for their service. And teach. We will teach the young people with us today the value of freedom secured for us by our veterans. So Father, we ask you to bless these wreaths that we are about to place on their graves and also to please protect the men and women who continue to serve our country, who will not be home with their families this Christmas. And finally, be with us as we continue to pray for a world at peace. Amen. A remembrance wreath in honor of those who served and are serving in the United States Army will be placed by Ernie Maynard of the American Legion Post 80 and Battle of the Bulge veteran Ryan Thomas, Weeblos 2, Troop 108. Elizabeth Davis, Senior Girl Scout Troop 10578.
a remembrance wreath in honor of those who served and are serving in the United States Marine Corps will be placed by Sante Isopo, American Legion, American, Italian American Veterans Post 17. Well, actually, that is Jerry Thibodeau of the Italian American Veterans Post 17. Santi, this is on my, that is Santi, yes. You're that one. Okay, that is Santi. Jerry's doing another read. Kenneth Hall, Scout Troop 108, and Carrie Donahue, Senior Girl Scout Troop 10578. A remembrance wreath in honor of those who served and are serving in the United States Navy will be placed by Rick Gorman, American Legion Post 80, Boy Scout, Lee Braun, Scout, Troop 108, Girl Scouts, Olivia Castagno, Senior, Girl Scout Troop 10578. A remembrance wreath in honor of those who served and are serving in the United States Air Force will be placed by Jerry Thibodeau, AMVETS, Post 18, Frank Floriano, Scout Troop 108, and Olivia Brigadis, Senior Girl Scout Troop 10578. A remembrance wreath in honor of those who served and are serving in the United States Coast Guard will be placed by Charlie Harris, AMVETS Post 18, Lee Braun, Scout, Boy Scout Troop 108, Samantha Navin, Senior Girl Scout 10578. A remembrance wreath in honor of those who served and are serving in the Mer United States Merchant Marines will be placed by Don Hojinski, American Legion Post 154, and an Army veteran, Frank Torriano, Boy Scout uh, Troop 108, 
and Jessica Viveros, Senior Girl Scout, Troop 10578. A remembrance wreath in honor of the 81,954 United States military personnel from all branches of the service whose last known status was either prisoner of war or missing in action. We shall never forget you. Is presented by Hunter Cormier, Life Scout, Troop 108. Dylan Parrott, Senior Girl Scout, Troop 10682. Thank you. Before we close today's ceremony, I would like to say to our children, we want you to understand the freedoms that you enjoy today, like going shopping or to the movies, have come with a cost that someday you may have to pay. But thanks to our veterans, we have the freedoms to go shopping, to the movies, and travel about this great nation without fear. As, as a nation standing together, we can defeat terrorism, hatred, and injustice. To everyone here, I encourage you to place a wreath on a veteran's final resting place. I encourage you to say that veteran's name aloud, if you can read the marker, and say a moment to thank them for their service to our country. It is a small act that goes a long way to keep the me memory of our veterans alive. Before we conclude the ceremony, I ask all volunteers that are placing wreaths to please stay here for a moment after the ceremony so I can provide specific guidance on which sections the wreaths will be placed. Thank you. By the way, we have the most wreaths that we've ever had sponsored this year. We have 1,053 wreaths to place this year. So that's Thank you everybody for, for doing that. Absolutely amazing. For those that are sitting and are able to stand, please rise for the rifle salute, taps, and retirement of the colors. Once the colors are retired, Chloe will lead us in God Bless America. Color Guard, retire the colors.
God bless America, them that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with fire.